Wednesday, May 31st. Lake level is 9, 26 and 3 quarters. It's actually coming down about 6 inches a day and it's kind of amazing that all the rain that we had around the lake last weekend never did really come up after that rain. Seems like the lake comes up a lot more. We've got such a large watershed that when it rains, you know, in Springfield and south of here a bunch is when we get the big increases. But anyway, it's coming down steadily about 6 to 8 inches a day. Uh, water temperature is also coming up. It's you know, probably 72 degrees this morning. I'm seeing a lot of 72 to 75 degrees, warmer in some spots throughout the day. But, you know, I was talking about it was time for a lot of them largemouth to start showing up, you know, after they got through spawning. And I'm seeing a lot more bait activity, a little bit of, a little bit more top water action than what I've been seeing. And, and we are definitely catching some good quality largemouth. We've had several fish in this past week over five pounds uh, probably our biggest fish was about a seven and a half pounder so we are seeing a lot more of them you know bigger fish now where it had primarily been smallmouth if you get in the right areas uh, there's starting to be a lot more Kentuckys and, and the quality large mouths are showing up uh, now let's talk a little bit about you know how we're catching them there's still you know a good neg rig bite a little swim bait bite going on on the main lake points you know, flat gravel, and there's still a lot of Kentuckys and uh, smallmouth in those areas there. But every once in a while, you'll catch a big old largemouth out there on them gravel flats as well. Like I say, some of them fish that have been in the bushes, starting to work back out to a little bit deeper water as the water gets warmer. And uh, the swim bait that's been working a little bit better for me is a little bit bigger one, you know about a 3.3 or about a three and a half inch swim bait instead of you know like a, I was throwing a lot more of the 2.8 swim baits. Uh, another bait that's been working pretty good out on the flat gravel points it's been a five, a five inch smoke grub. Uh, this is a chompers but like a, a Bass Pro XPS Yamamoto will work fine but uh, smoke with red flakes seems to be working real good. I was throwing a lot more white colors because the water was dirtier, but the water's pretty much a lot of the brown is settling out of it, so it's got a nice, pretty green color. And you know, if you've heard me in the past, I'm usually not real, real big on you know fishing braid, but it seems like with the water up like this and some of the cover that I'm fishing, I'm fishing a lot of braid on my spinning rods, even on my finesse baits like this. I've actually got the 20 pound braid and I tie on about a 10 or 12 foot monofilament or fluorocarbon leader and I use a surgeon's knot to join the two together that way the knot has no problem coming through the eyelets but the good thing about the braided line you know it's, it's 20 pound line and I've come across this new suffix uh, 832 it's a pretty awesome uh, braided line I've uh, been working real well but it's th this particular line is 20 pound cast but a six pound diameter and works real good on the still on the finesse baits but where it's really been working good for me is a lot of times I've you know a lot of people aren't real comfortable throwing a bait caster in tight spots like up around the bushes and stuff so what I've been able to do is if a person's not comfortable with the bait caster I can rig them up a spinning rod with the same braid 20 pound line I can, you know and I'll tie the spinner bait right to it Normally, if I'm throwing a finesse bait, I'll tie a mono fluorocarbon leader. If I'm throwing like a, a flipping type bait or a spinner bait or even a top water, I'll usually tie the braid directly to the bait. And a lot of the reasons for that is I think that mono and fluorocarbon gives the finesse bait a lot better action. I don't think it matters with the spinner bait and I actually don't want the lighter mono or fluorocarbon tied onto that spinner bait the areas that we're throwing in. But the areas that we're catching a lot of these better fish and I'm throwing a lot of different colored spinner baits. You know the war eagle that I showed you last week, the purple with a few strands of chartreuse is, is working well. Here's another one with quite a little bit of purple on it. I'm throwing pretty much all willow blades. Uh, Sometimes I'll use one gold, one nickel, just kind of mix up the colors a little bit. 
but a lot of shad colored skirts I'm not using too much of the white blades or the the coleslaw bait anymore and also I'm throwing a 3 8 ounce and a half ounce chatter bait with a three and a half inch swim bait now where I'm throwing this is a lot of main lake points some secondary points but it's a lot of them same flatter points where we're catching them on the finesse baits but I'm getting up in the bushes and I'm not necessarily getting in behind the bushes most of these fish the, the best depth seems to be about 8 to 12 feet of water to set the boat in and that 12 feet right now is about where the old shoreline is or was so that's the the depth I seem to be keen on is from there in you know and a lot of the fish are coming out of the buck brush that normally is two or three foot out of the water and I'm really having to work the spinner bait and the chatter bait real slow through that and you know what's strange is we've been able to catch them on a spinner bait in less than ideal spinner bait conditions if you know some of the pictures I put on table rock fishing with you know some of the better fish the water has been dead slick no wind but the key is you got to work the bait real slow uh, you'll feel it ticking off the brush and a lot of times you'll feel the fish just kind of push the bait. But when they do that, a lot of times, if you've got enough line out, they will come back and, and bite it. Along with the spinner bait in the same area, we've been catching several fish on a, a baby brush hog. It's about a quarter ounce, five sixteenths ounce weight, rigging it Texas style. And watermelon red seems to be working real good. And you know, you can catch them on just about whatever your confidence uh, flipping bait is. If you've got confidence in a tube, rig up a tube Texas rig. I've been throwing a lot of like Strike King rodents. This is a Reaction Renovations uh, Kinky Beaver. It's a little bit different than a regular beaver. It's got a little bit longer tail. And I've also been taking a, a beaver and putting it on a uh, a pig sticker Bobby Albert jig, uh, either 3 8 ounce or half ounce. And I'm working this stuff over the brush, the same place I'm throwing the spinner bait, and down in between the brush. And you know, the hard part is when you're sitting out there at the edge of the bushes, the best looking water is behind the bushes right now. You know, there's, there's a lot of dead grass and that three to six foot of water. A couple weeks ago, that's where I was getting a bit better, but it seems like as the water's falling and these fish are starting to migrate a little bit out towards deeper water they seem to be more at the edge of the bush line so you know you key it key it on them with the spinner bait uh, structure type bait I mean uh, like structure bug beaver bait creature bait and just work it real slow on them areas normally when you get one bite you're still going to get three or four bites I haven't been doing it very much but you should be able to back out on them points the same place I was catching them on a football jig start throwing a Carolina rig Carolina rig lizard uh, a centipede, baby brush hog, and you want to fish that 15 to 25 foot deep. And another another bite that's really starting to come into play is a deep diving crankbait. Normally, the river arms are the best to do this, but where the water's pretty much stained throughout the lake, a lot of these main lake secondary points, if you can catch them on a football jig or Carolina rig, a lot of days you'll see them suspended up off the bottom a little bit. And that's a good time to try either a bigger swim bait or like a Strike King uh, 6XD Fat Free Shad DD22. And I'd stay in something with the Chartreuse and White, uh, Citrus Shad, Chartreuse and Blue because of the, the water color. Uh, top water bite, like I say, is starting to pick up. It's not real consistent, but there have been some fish chasing in the morning. There's also been some white bass mixed in with them. So a little bit of everything going on. The fish are starting to move out of it a little bit deeper. And we've even caught some drop shot this week in 25 foot of water. I don't think the fish are going to get extremely deep this summer because of the water flow and the current. The thermocline is probably not going to set up that deep. But they are starting to work out to their uh, summertime homes. And actually as more get out there, the fishing is going to be a lot more consistent from day to day. So uh, till next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.